Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us today on the Welcome to We Show. My name is Robert Levine, and I am sitting in for Rick Olfick today. Rick um, had to go through a procedure. It went success. It was successful. He's doing fine. He's home, and he is recovering. So please send him your energy and your prayers. And we're looking forward to Rick being back with us very, very soon. So. Once again, I'm Robert Levine. I'm the editor of Trends for Global Grassroots Organizing, the uh, magazine that highlights all the exciting organizations and the exciting uh, people that are working very hard to make this and to create a better world. So We the World, as everyone here knows, is a global coalition building organization with 11 campaigns for change. You can take action with us by going to we.net. We have three goals. Those goals are to inspire, to inform, and to involve you and millions around the world to create a world that works for all, to go from a me society to a we society. And today we have an amazing show dedicated to the, to the legacy and life of Dr. Martin Luther King. This weekend celebrates his birth. His birthday is January 15th. We celebrate it this year on the 17th. And before we get into the show, I would like to take a moment to remember an amazing man, a good friend of We the World, um, Bishop Desmond Tutu, who passed away in 2021 in December. He was a champion of human rights and social justice, not only in his homeland of, of, uh, of South Africa, but also around the world. Um, an amazing man who's been a good friend of WE, he'd been a supporter of the WE campaign, the 11 Days of Global Unity since 2004. And he most recently appeared on the 11 Days of Global of global, of global unity in 2020. So he will be missed greatly by all of us. So as we begin our show, and we have a group of amazing guests, Dr. Marty Casey, Patrick Carolyn, and John Bramer. So to begin our first segment is we're inviting, as a regular segment, we're inviting people who have contributed, who are not only good friends of we, but who have contributed to Trends Magazine. Two of those wonderfully talented, dedicated um, people who have been contributing to Trends and have articles in the two latest issues are Dr. Marty Casey and Patrick Carolyn. Dr. Casey is the founder of the Ungun Institute. And this past year, she was a recipient of the Presidential Lifetime Achievement Award. Congratulations, Dr. Marty and Patrick Carolyn, an activist, former executive director of the Franciscan Action Network, someone who has dedicated his life to the spiritual tradition of social justice and, and change. So I'd like to invite Dr. Marty um, Casey and Patrick for this first segment. And first of all, I want to thank you both for your contributions to Trends. They've been inspiring, um, really showing us a path towards living our lives in the tradition of Dr. King, using our lives, using our actions to inspire and inform and to involve uh, the same goals of We the World. So Dr. Casey, I'd like you to come on, Dr. Marty. I'd like you to take a moment and just talk about the work you do um, with the Ungun Institute as well. And if you'd like to talk a little bit about your presidential, about your presidential, uh, um, your presidential, oh, um, sorry, my, I, my I tongue got award. Uh, your award, please, <laughs> please. Wow, well, first of all, happy new year, Robert. <laughs> it is happy such an honor. Year. 
And a pleasure to start this year off with you being here in this space. And the reason that I think it's imperative that I say that is because that is really the work that we all do when we can share our spaces and have an opportunity to come together to collaborate. It makes our voices bigger and there's power in numbers. And if there's anybody who understood that is Dr. King. Dr. King had a mission and he had a dream, but he understood that in order for his dream to be carried out, that he had to bring in as many people as he possibly could and, and inspiring them and informing them on what it is that uh, he was leading the way with is, is the reason that that involvement was there and we were able to evolve. And so, um, so gracious for Dr. King, but so gracious for, for, for people like yourself and Rick uh, Ulfick with, with the uh, WE Network, just understanding that that is the power of what we can do to make change when we share our platforms and we come together to be a, a, a bigger voice in larger numbers. So happy new year to you and everyone who's listening in. In. Um, to your point of when you uh, you said you wanted me to share uh, what I do, I want to uh, also, I think this is a good segue to say this, that everything that I do, it is a we thing. It is not a me thing. It is definitely not a Dr. Marty thing alone. Everything that I do, I try to make it to where um, others can be involved. And I look at things uh, from, from three different perspectives. One is from a global perspective. So when we think of global, we think of the whole world, everybody, anybody, wherever you are, you, there's something you can do to add to the movement. Then I look at things from a community base. And when I say community, that is also inclusive of everyone where, wherever you are, maybe in the nation or you know across the nation or what have you in the United States and, and what can we do as a community? Because that word community connects us. And so I'm, I'm very uh, strategic when I use that word community. It's about bringing us all kind of, you know, not, a, not making us feel like it's so far removed and because I don't know this person or they in a different zip code or a different part of the, the state that it's not inclusive to what we're doing. Yes, we're so community based, it is inclusive to all of us. And then there's a word that I use called the village. And when I speak of the village, I'm speaking specifically from almost from a place for where Dr. Martin Luther King understood that the village needed to be a part of the community. The village being African Americans, where there are so many times our village was not being inclusive to so many things that was happening in the community or globally. And Dr. King understood that so well out of everyone that I have come to know about, um, Dr. King was is, is truly still the mastermind of understanding that the village needed to connect to the community and the community needed to connect globally. And uh, when you talk about Desmond Tutu and, 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 we, um, and we think about, um, and so many other greats, uh, um, oh, Gandhi and, and um, so many others, they understood that we have to bring everyone into that space. So the work that I do today with Ungun Institute, I go all the way back dealing with um, trauma and how far back does trauma affect us globally, community and to the village. When I talk about the village, it takes us all the way back to slavery. And when I talk about community, it takes us back maybe just last week to January 6th of one year of an insurrection. And if I talk about it globally, it takes us back to, to all of the uh, global wars that we have experienced over many, many years and we are still suffering and still trying to heal from. So uh, I believe that the work that I'm doing through Ungun Institute really is working Work that is necessary, but is definitely not work that I can do alone. This is, it has to be where we all connect and come together. But the good news is you don't have to look at it as uh, being so huge, like we're trying to, you know, digest an elephant. No, I want you to look at it as bite size. And when you look at it as bite size, we can deal with the trauma, the hurt and pain of any level of, of trauma that we've been dealing with if we start with self. That's the only time that I really want you to be an individual when you're dealing with your personal hurt and pain 
start with yourself, take a look in the mirror and see where, what am I still holding on to? What is still keeping me from connecting to the village, to the community, to our global, our, our, our global movement? What's keeping me from being involved and showing up and being my very best? When you are able to answer that question, whether it goes back to your childhood or it goes back to a generational trauma, or it may even go back to something that happened to you on yesterday, that is when Ungun Institute can come in and assist and help you to, to break from that. Ungunning is simply that to undo, to get rid of, to remove anything that stands in a way that becomes a block for you mentally, physically, or spiritually, keeping you from living your best life. That is what ungunning is all about. And I'm so excited that I um that I have been trusted, if you will, with a mission that large to, to connect with anybody anywhere in the world at any given time because of platforms like yours, uh, Robert and Ricks and, and uh, Zoom. And, and we have a way to reach each other now that we don't have to get on an airplane and, and deal with the pandemic, but we can come right into a frame like this and we can help each other out so that we can feel better and be better because when we feel better and, and we are better, we do better. Thank you, Dr. Marty. What you're saying is so crucial and so important for these times, because so often I talk to people and they are so concerned, what can I do? How can I make a difference? And you speak to that, you speak to the heart, you speak about how, how each of us can make a difference, which actually, which is exactly what Patrick has been saying in his wonderful article, Human Rights um, Begins With Each of Us. Um, Patrick, would you like to speak about that a bit? Sure, but uh, first of all, let me um, say, um, it's very difficult to follow Dr. Marty. Um, <laughs> so uh, um, I'm really happy to be here with you and with all of you. And just the wonderful work that doc Dr. Marty does. Um, both with Hunt Gunn and, and, and all of the other great work that she's done. And in and, and, and her presentation, she talked about the connection, the connecting. Um, I'm part of the uh, uh, Franciscan family. I worked for 10 years as the executive director of the Franciscan Action Network. Those of you who know anything about the Franciscans um, or about the work of St. Francis of Assisi know that it's all built on the, the theology centered around that we're all connected. We're all part of the one. There's not separate, we're not separate, we're all, each of us are connected to each other and to all of creation. And that's, that connection has been separated. Um, and, and we have to work to bring that connection back so that we understand that we are all part of the one. And, you know, and one of the beautiful things about Franciscan theology, um, and not to, you know, bore you or go into deep theological concepts, usually I have to have a couple glasses of wine before I do that. Um, but, but, you know, there was a 13th century um, Franciscan theologian and philosopher, John Ben Scotus, and he wrote about the whole interconnectedness while we are still individuals. And we bring that, our individuality into our connection to all of creation. Um, and he really stressed the idea that it was all of creation. It's not just us as, as humans, but all of creation. I'm an activist. I've been an activist since I was about 13 years old. Um, I've been arrested more times than I can count for nonviolent civil disobedience. I've gone on hunger fast. I've done a lot of that. I, I've more recently come to the conclusion that um, we need to really be in the transformative business. We should be, everything we should be doing should be about transforming ourselves so that again, we are all connected. We sometimes, and I worked in Washington, D.C. for many years, and it's wonderful people, good friends of mine, people I've been in jail with, that um, um, worked in Washington, D.C., and they would work in their silos. They would talk about how, well, I work on immigration, or I work on climate, or I work on this issue, I work on racism. And, I, you know, and part of what I write about, part of what I talk about is these are all symptoms. These aren't the issues. These are symptoms of the issue. The issue is, and as a person of faith, no matter, you know, whatever faith you, you practice, you're a person of faith, is are we in right relationship with God? And in doing so, are we in right relationship with all of God's creation? And you know, for a lot of us, a lot of religions, 
they, they have it kind of backwards. They talk about how we first have to be in right relationship with God. And then when we're in right relationship with God, we can then go and become in right relationship with all of creation. But in reality, we first have to be in right relationship with each other and all of creation. And in doing so, we then become in right relationship with God. And so I think that um, we need to really work together, as, as Dr. Marty had said, um, to, to build that, um, build that connection between each of us. You know, there's a, um, people through quantum physics have figured out that what happens here, what I do here can affect something halfway across the world. I uh, recently watched a movie, I was invited to watch a movie called The uh, Ant and the Grasshopper, wonderful documentary about a woman from Africa, a farmer who came to the United States because she didn't feel that the people in the United States really understood climate change and what it was doing to her farm. And she came to share her story about what climate change and what we were doing to her farm over in Africa. We lose sight of that. We look at our own little tiny um, space and say, it's only about this. It's only about me. It's about maybe my family. But what we do affects people all over the globe. And, and until we come to that understanding and come together like that, we're never going to be able to move forward. Um, and I think, again, what Dr. Marty had said, and she says it much more eloquently than I can say it. Um, so I'll, uh, I'll leave it on that note. Thank you so much, Patrick. I think you were both quite eloquent on today. And you bring us to the central. You're wonderful, Thank you. Patrick. Thank you. <laughs> and you bring us to a point about what we should be celebrating over these next few days. You know, as we all know, Dr. King's birthday has been a federal holiday, I think, since, since 1986. But you do wonder um, how we celebrate it across the country and across the world. It's not just a day off, which it is unfortunately for too many people, which is why I know we the world is so excited to be part of um, the um, 40 days of um, peace running from January 15th to February 28th. Um, the um, 40 Days of Peace is the vision of our next guest, John Raymer, who's also the founder of the Compassion Games. So John, thank you for joining us today. Well, it is an honor to be here. Thank you, Robert, and my gosh, to follow Marty and Patrick. Um, it, there must be some divine intervention in all this, right? Because we all know we are hurting, we need to heal. And um, the words of Dr. King, it's incredible to read what he spoke. Uh, I just was, his book title, where do we go from here? Chaos or community? And we've never been in a place like this. And the good news is, is that somewhere in this wayfinding that's being called for us, we're connected like we've never been before. And um, Zoom is a household word. And this idea that we can discover and find each other and connect and actually bring about the changes that Dr. King talked about, manifesting that dream. As Rick Ulfick and the whole We the World has beautifully put forward here. Um, and we know that words are just not enough. So, this urgency, the fierce urgency of now, it's never been fiercer, it's never been more urgent. And we're excited for the, all the campaigns and trends and what you guys are doing and how what you're doing is fitting with all the other things that are happening around us that like Patrick spoke to have historically been siloed. This is not um, a trivial challenge. The move from this kind of egoic way of leadership to like a swarm intelligence. You know, you see in nature, it's miraculous how bees will move or fish will move. And we as a people on earth need to learn how to do that and how we can mimic nature and not have our own needs so shape our behavior, but really be in service. What anybody can be great because anybody can serve. Another 
gift from Dr. King. So the idea of those 40 days, by the way, in, it wasn't me who had that idea. It was Peter Hayes from Compassion Games who suggested that we extend this weekend, what's coming up, which is his birthday on the 15th, as well as on the 17th being the day of service, not a day off, like you said, Robert. Through the 40 days, it goes to the end of February. And there's a lot happening in that time frame. And Gandhi and King, you know, Martin Luther King went to India and inspired by the whole principles of nonviolence and the connection there during that period of time, because the, the bond between them is so strong and so important because Dr. King spoke of the world house, right? It isn't just a national figure and, and he wasn't just a gift to the US, but he's such a gift to the world. So healing. And you know what? People don't talk about distance learning. Let's talk about distance healing. Maybe we can start to use this environment as the indigenous world says, we don't have places to empty. We need safe and supportive places for us to empty. And like Baldwin said, you know, everything we face can't be changed, but nothing can be changed until we face it. This was the words of James Baldwin. So perhaps my hope and dream is that this incredible transformation we're all going through on this planet that's bringing us together is gonna to actually lead to us connecting. We had to be physically distanced to maybe really socially and spiritually connect so that we can actually bring about the changes that need to happen and make the sacrifices, reset our priorities so that we can actually be in beloved community and live beloved community. So I'm working on me that I have more access to than anything else. Because I'm so grateful to you, Dr. Casey, for your gift to the world. And look what happened. In fact, we're going to tell that story. And Patrick's involved in all this too. I mean, with Brother Ben and the connections, but how the death of and the murdering of George Floyd woke up so many of us and how Black Sunday then appeared and then how Black, Sun Black Sunday was seen connecting with the work happening in, in Australia with the Star family. We don't want to be called Aboriginal, uh, but this injustice needs to stop. The work of the Franciscans has been saying this for years. We know it. But now something tells me we're on the verge of actually moving beyond those as words and synergizing our attention, our intention, and most important, our capabilities, and using our resources in creative ways to turn what we have into what we need. And we, the world, have been such a great expression of that for so many years. Rick and the leadership that he's offered is a great example of how to keep finding ways to weave together. So Robert, it's great to have you here hosting while Rick's getting well. And we've got, you know, with the campaigns, 11 different campaigns and what's happening for the MLK convergence this weekend. And then for those 40 days, everybody's welcome to come. Everybody's invited, like we say, magic canoe, moving between worlds, lots of room. Everybody's welcome here to serve our journey home. Well, we are excited that we are, that um, we is indeed part of the 40 days in the annual um, MLK, um, it is the manifesting of the dream. So that's something we're very excited to be, to be part of because it's all about connecting um, the individuals and the organizations from around the world and to spotlight the specific steps that, that each of us can actually take right now um, to affect real change, um, which is what yourself and Dr. Marty and Patrick have been highlighting. That, you know, we've all had conversations with so many people about making changes in the world. And again, it comes down to the question, what can I do? I'm just an individual. But it really comes down to that, the steps you can take. So, um, you know, and um, Patrick, um, Dr. Marty, please feel free to come on but, you know, is there anything in particular that, you know, you'd like to uh, highlight that is occurring over the next few days that you really want to bring attention to? The steps um, people are taking that organizations are taking to make a real change at this time? Well, uh, let me just say one thing. This is a good example. It's happening actually right now. So this live stream has been turned into a sine wave. What does that mean? That we've got an alliance of social innovators that are sharing, that have said, when you guys from We the World go live, we're going to put this out on our pages too. 
And this is just a simple example of what we could do when we build upon the trust that we can establish with each other. And trusted sharing is one example of a new kind of agreement making that needs to happen amongst us who have these shared values and recognize we need to change in unprecedented ways. My wife and I, we're, we're admins on over 300 Facebook pages. And I'm only using that as an example of what we're capable of doing when we use trust. Now, at the same time, I want to honor Greta. Greta Thunberg, enough blah, 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 no more blah, blah, blah. So I'm looking for real kinds of agreements and things we could do like that, that all of us need to do, because things won't be different unless we do them differently. And I just use that as an example that honors so many of us who are realizing these are unprecedented times, calling for unprecedented action. And the good news is, as we're seeing, for a climate change rally um, ended a few years back, all ethnic groups of all nationalities. And I remember of young activists saying to them, guys, don't let anyone tell you when you get to a certain age, you have to give up your activism. It's something that you have to live your entire life and it's something we all need to be involved with. And you know, you've got to stay with it. You've got to keep on uh, marching. And um, it's, that's why it's so great to see someone like Greta Thunberg and seeing, you know, people from all ages, which of course was um, Desmond Tutu. Um, he was an activist until he um, passed away. And the work you're all doing is really fabulous. And we're so glad you are part of the week. If I could jump in real quick, um, Robert, on that point. Um, I think, you know, Bill McKibben is a, a really good example. Um, some of you, you may be aware, Bill McKibben has now started another organization um, called uh, Our Time. And it's an organization for people over 60. And um, I'm trying to help him a little bit with it. And, and it really is just um, folks over 60 who have been activists or maybe not, but now they have some time and they wanna become activists. And also, but it's an organization for people over 60 to mentor younger people. Um, because a lot of us have been in this for a long time. And, and I mean, I uh, helped organize a walkout at my high school to protest the Vietnam War. So that gives you an idea of how long ago I started doing this kind of stuff. Um, but but um, Bill's new organization is just that, you know, we don't stop because we reach a certain age. Activists never retire. Um, the other thing I think that's really important to uh, uh, say and understand is we all, all of us have stories. And we really have to get those stories out there. We have to tell those stories um, because it's through the stories that we learn about and we learn about each other and, and that we uh, uh, grow together. And then the last thing I want to say is, um, and again, you know, one of the beauties of Dr. Martin Luther King, and he, like um, um, some of the other people that, you know, in history, who were really stood out in their generations, like St. Francis and, and folks like that, they understood that it's not about this issue or that issue. They understood that all of these issues are connected. Dr. Martin Luther King, as much as he's, you know, always talked about for his work on civil rights, was also a labor activist and an environmentalist and worked on those issues. And he understood the connection between all of those issues. And so that's where we have to start to come together and bring folks together, not working on this issue or that issue or this issue, but working on the one issue of bringing about change. I'm Christian, so I believe in the uh, incarnation. I believe that the incarnation had nothing to do with the crucifixion, that the incarnation was about Jesus coming to create heaven on earth. We kind of took that message and, and you know went far afield on it. But if Jesus came to create heaven on earth, don't you think we ought to start creating it here? Right, which is also the topic of a very fine article that, um, that you wrote for a for an earlier um, issue of um, Trends. And I recommend that everyone should go, go and find it and to read it because it is such a good article. Dr. Marty, would you like to add anything 
I would, mm-hmm. I, I would. I've been over here just listening, being a sponge, taking it all in. So I hope that what I'm about to throw out here, it all makes sense because I want to try to get it all in. The first thing that I want to say is that I started my activism uh, in my first year of college. And it was because uh, I think someone mentioned that in 1986, I think you said it, Robert, is that when Dr. King's <clears throat> uh, Dr. King became a, a national holiday that we was observing. Well, in 1989, when I went away to college, I realized that my college was not observing his birthday. So I shut it all down. I went and knocked door to door. I stayed in a co-ed dorm and I knocked and I said, we're not going to class today. We should not be in class. I said, we are blacks and whites, uh, young men and young girls. And we would not even be in this space if it was not for Dr. King. And I said, we need to to express to those who we're giving our money to that is supposed to be in, in a point in an education in us, how important it is for us to observe Dr. King's birthday. So I taught them uh, quick songs like We Shall Overcome, Kumbaya, uh, Stevie Wonders, uh, Dr. King's happy birthday version. I mean, we were singing all the way up to the classes. And I remember the Dean of Students calling me in his, his office and he says, Marty, if you don't get everyone back to class, you're going to lose your scholarship. I said, this is a scholarship worth losing and I don't have to lose it. I want to give it back to you because again, I wouldn't even be at this school right now on a full scholarship in music if it was not for Dr. King. And I'm willing to lose anything that is in comparison to who and how great this man was. And I'm going to tell you, I walked away from my scholarship. I did not graduate from college because of that. And just a few years ago, about three years ago, my college actually got in contact with me, did a big story. And if you go to the to the to my college right now, you will see on the wall, there's a the big article about uh Dr. Marty Casey because of what I stood up for way back then in 1990. So I'm very proud to say that when we use our activism for good and that's why i call myself an activist i'm a professional actress slash activist and the two combined becomes a mouthpiece and an opportunity to help uh uh, actually bridge that gap that we we are seeing so much of a divide of so that's the first thing that i want to say the other thing i want to say because i am an activist i'm all about the arts stevie wonder had he not written that song Happy birthday to Dr. King. It would not have received the federal attention that it received and for the White House to invite him to come to perform that song and get behind him to make Dr. King's birthday um, celebration, to, to put it on the level that it needed to be so that we could all join in and say, yes, this needs to be become a national holiday. It began with a song a simple happy birthday song. So every year that we hear that song, don't just listen to that song. It's like, oh yeah, that's Stevie Wonder. That's that happy birthday version. No, that song is the reason that Dr. King it's birthday actually got the um, the attention that it needed on a federal level. And I think that's really, really important. The other thing that I wanted to mention is that on January 17th, that is when we will be observing. That's the third Monday. That's when we will be observing Dr. King's birthday. Do you all know that that is also called Blue Monday? Blue Monday is the it, it, it is it, it's the. Uh, the uh, greatest or the biggest Monday, I should say, of the year where people are committing suicide, where people are are disconnecting. And and and, and I said, wow, we're going to blue Monday is falling on Dr. King's birthday. Oh, we need to do something about this. So Ungun Institute, knowing that and seeing that on the calendar months be, a, a few months ago, I actually wanted to book in something. So I pulled together a series of speakers, 10 speakers that we actually did um, a series of speakers to speak to help people to deal with their hurt and pain on November 28th. We're going to upload all of that speaker series, six hours of content on Blue Monday so that if there's anybody on Dr. King's birthday that is feeling the pain and the hurt and the and, and uh, the, the trauma of whatever it is that they're dealing with, we wanna be able to have some resources tangible in hand to them. And I need to talk to John about this afterwards 
words, but we need to have this, this uploaded on YouTube where we can get these resources in people's homes and hands to help them because we're, we are not going to continue to count deaths. It's time for us to count lives. In order to do that, we have to be powerful and intentional and come together and be there for our people, for the community. Like John said, it's, Dr. King said, is it chaos or is this community? He understood then it was bigger than the village. The village may be where you specifically come from, like the Star family. That might be your village. But when we're talking community, we're talking about everybody in the family. So that's all I have. Thank to you, say. Dr. Marty. That's all made sense. <laughs> now, you, now you said some great things and thank you. I did not know that about the 17th and that's just so critical that we get the word out there. Yes. Um, so what, just to clarify that, though, good news about you. Really appreciate that. The 17th is the National Day of Service. The day, fortunately, his birthday is on the 15th, but the whole weekend's devoted to service. And, and, and you are beautiful. This is uh, Dr. Casey. I'm Earl. sorry. I'm sorry. I was saying, but it's always the third Monday that we observe his birthday. So that right. is that it happens to be falling on that Got day. It. And we need to be intentional and get out front and make sure that Dr. King's day doesn't go into the the um, the global media or what have you of being a, a, a Black Sunday. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yes, no, Monday or whatever. We, Monday. I mean, say Monday. Monday we don't right. want that to be. Yeah, we want this to be a celebration of goodness and healing and community. And the way that we do that is that we we just you know, uh, surge up and put as much positive content out there that we possibly can. Right. So when Robert is, asks, what can we do? That's what we yeah, can yeah. do. And like, you're calling for me to help. I'm available to help and support that. We will do that on this, uh, as part of the convergence, the 17th. I'll talk to you when this call is over and we'll make that happen. Absolutely. Love it. Thank you, Thank Dr. you John. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this is what we're here for. To get stuff done. Now's the time. Thank you both very much. I'm glad. I'm glad we could have this conversation. And so, if you're there, if you're talking to each other, if you're sharing, that's how we make a difference. And this is a perfect example of that. Yep. Um, so, uh, Patrick, before we, I think before we say good night, would you like any closing words on your on your behalf? Well, I just. Um... I don't believe in closing words, so because I don't believe we ever end, we're just a continuum. Um, so, uh, just uh, it's a real pleasure to be here with you all. And, and um, I, you know, my, my only words, everybody else has said it already, is, is about the weekend being a weekend of service. But I think that uh, Dr. Martin Luther King would not want it to be just a weekend of service. I think Dr. Martin Luther King would want it to be the beginning of a lifetime of service, a oh. lifetime of connecting. So, yeah. Too many people sort of look at this and say, okay, I'm going to do this on this day, whether it's Dr. Martin Luther King Day or some other day. That should be what we do every day. What we do this weekend, mm -hmm. the weekend for Dr. Martin Luther King is how we should be every single day, every single week going forward. And let's try to work toward that. Great. Thank you so much. That's so, that's so important to share with people. That it's a, such a commitment, but it's a commitment done from the heart. It's done with love. So, and I think that's came that came across very clearly from the three of you. Your work is so heartfelt, and that comes through. That comes through so clearly. So, thank you. I appreciate the three of you being with us some today. We of course all miss Rick. You know, we look forward to when he come back. I also want to take a moment to um, to thank Angel Fullerton, yes. who is doing the production end of this, who is handling the tech. She makes all things um, possible. And I don't know what we do in we if we did not have Angel. So thank you, Angel. Thank you, Angel. Thank you, Angel. Certainly an honor to be part of this team. Great. So um, uh, Robert, can I leave one last little quick thought? Please. I just wanted to leave everyone with a quick visual. If butterflies can fly in the sky with bees and bees can fly in the sky with eagles and eagles can fly in the sky with airplanes. Why can't we walk on this earth together side by side? Amen. Oh, yeah. Amen. 
Amen. Beautiful way to close. Thank you. And as we close for the night, and again, we all send Rick our best wishes. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to close with a few words that I know Rick often uses to end the show. He's quoting Jonathan Granoff, who's also part of the WE community, um, hoping that WE expands so much that there is no longer any them. So thank you for being with WE this evening. Okay, good night. Okay, the live stream is stopped. Okay, great. Thank you all. Um, Thank you you made Robert. this an incredibly um, wonderful experience. Wow. Uh, it was awesome. I'd be happy to do it again, especially if Dr. Marty's going to be on. <laughs> oh, Patrick, listen, <laughs> I was thinking the same thing about you. I'm like, I can listen to this man anytime. <laughs> I love it. This is awesome. Thank you so much. Robert, you were just amazing. Great. Yeah. You yeah, were truly, really truly amazing. Yes. The discussion along and, and kept it going and and thank you john too for thank not just for this but for everything that you do to everything keep us all that going. you do john you john yeah. you're, you're you're our angel you're our <laughs> angel on the earth i mean what we could i mean we wouldn't be able to reach any further than our living room if it wasn't for john i just i thank, thank you, you. it's an honor <laughs> really privileged really privileged this thank is what we came here to do now's our time Yep. Dr. Casey, are you available? You want to talk now or when's yeah, good? Yeah, yeah. You want to uh, you want to send me your Zoom link and I can yeah, jump. I'll send you a Zoom link right now. Okay. okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna hop off, but before I do, I'm gonna send you all a video of um, it's a 30 minute video. Uh, Y'all, I think know Brian McLaren or know who Brian McLaren is. Uh -huh. And uh, yes. Brian gave a talk last year at the uh, Franciscan Federation gathering. And in it, he talked about, I, I've known Brian for a long time and worked with him. I think this is the best talk he's ever given. And he talked about going forward and what we need to do going forward. So I'll, I'll send you all an email with the link to that so you can take and listen to it because uh, Brian's one of my favorite people. I'm trying to get him to write for uh, the next issue of Trend. Um, and, and But I think you'll all enjoy that. And on that note, I leave you. That would be fabulous. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. And I love what Thank you, you Patrick. said. Okay, Patrick's gone, but I was going to say, I I'm love done. what you said. <laughs> okay, bye-bye. Thank you. And um, John, yeah, I will plan on being there on the on the 15th. Okay, the birthday celebration on the I'll 15th. On the opening ceremony on the 14th. I, there's a link I dropped in this chat to the whole weekend. You can see what's going on there. You're okay, welcome. great. It's free, and we'd love to have your voice great, there. You there. All right, beautiful. Super, Thanks, thank Angel. You. Thank okay. you, Robert. Good night. Have All a right, great bye night. Thanks. Good night. Angel, thank you. Thank you, Robert. You still here? Yes. I think we I think it was a really good show. It was. It was very inspiring. Great. So um I will we will talk soon. I'll reach, I'm sure Rick is watching. Um, I'll reach out to him in the morning just to check in on him. Okay. Okay, yeah. good um, good night, Angel. Good night.